Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Transatlantic Splatoon League. Uh, I am joined today by Riss High, and we have FD in Slothouse, and it should be getting going pretty quickly here. Yes, we are here, ready for FD Win versus Slaughterhouse, and first map that we're going to be seeing map and mode together is going to be Tower Control on Anchovy Games. So, this is a good starter map. Yeah, Tower Control and Anchovy Games is going to be the neutral pick, same as yesterday. Um, and we're going to see Slaughterhouse and FD Win fight out on it, and uh, I feel like we have another situation as yesterday, where the first map's a neutral pick, but it doesn't really feel that neutral. <laughs> I feel like FT win has been sliding some money to the TOs or something, because I feel like the way this map works definitely, definitely feels a lot more in their favor. Uh, so, yeah, I'm a bit worried if Slaughter House going to this first map, but maybe they'll shock me. Maybe they'll surprise me and come out with something crazy, because, uh, oh, no, I was going to say they have DJ playing for them today. They don't. But maybe he'll be coming in as an emergency, since he has, has been added to their roster as of today. So we might see the DJ come out later as a substitute. Who knows? The DJ Slosher, maybe? Maybe Ooh. we get to see some Slosher action. But I agree with you. Um, this, I have definitely seen FT win pop off on this map in particular. So uh, I'm interested how Slaughterhouse's take on this map is going to be. Yeah, Slaughterhouse are going to need to be, uh, be careful going into this one. I wouldn't be surprised if we see kind of a more uh, freeze comp from them. I, I'll, at this point, I'm calling it the freeze comp. It's just like... Zap, Machine, T-Tech, Charger. It's like the Western comp, you know what I mean? Like, I, I wouldn't be surprised if we see them bring it out on this map, since we have seen them play it before on similar maps, such as TC Inkblot, but maybe not considering Keem's been looking more on the Kenza Jr., but potentially we'll see something, you know, along those lines. Yeah, I I agree with that. I would definitely think that you would see that from them. Um, I'm, you know, interested too if Slaughterhouse is going to be coming out with that double bubble comp. I don't know if they, you mm. know, maybe want to do that for tower control, but I have been seeing them play that a lot in the last two weeks. Yeah, the double bubble comp is something that, uh, you know, I'll at least expect to see somewhere. Um, I'm not sure about if we'll see on the first, I don't know, because it's tower control and, okay, bubble's definitely not bad on tower control, but it's not like zones or clams where, okay, you have these big protection shields that you're going to walk through or on zones, instant caps, and, you know, big pressure on the zone. But I really do like these maps with bubbles. So I wouldn't be surprised if we do see them take on a form of the double bubble comp here, because I feel like you can put a lot of pressure on tower. You know, you can kind of, um, you know, the top right area um, where you're defending that is, you know, really oh, yeah. easy to defend tower from. If you just come yeah. down with some bubbles from there, I can imagine that being very, very hard to deal with. Especially, you know, if we see the Kenta Jr. Torpedo spam can be really useful on this map. Mm -hmm. So I definitely could see it come through. Yeah, I could see that come through. I, uh... Bubbles could definitely take up a big area, especially like the way Soldier plays it. You know, Soldier mm. is a master at popping that uh, that bubble special, uh, the surprise bubble special. So I could see that coming into play here. I just realized I wasn't sharing my screen. <laughs> okay, there we go. Sorry. Uh, yeah, I, I, <laughs> I almost didn't share the gameplay to Rissa as we started getting to the last countdown. It will be five seconds. And uh, today, FD Wins roster, I'm pretty sure it's Biscuit, Bagel, Kyo, and Bursty. However, we don't know because it's Bursty, Kyo, Bagel, and Bling Boy, Dollar Dollar. So um, I think Bling Boy, Dollar Dollar is Biscuit, but I, I, I don't know. Who knows? Yeah, we're, we were trying to guess who Bling Bling, whoever, whatever his name is. <laughs> we're trying to figure out who that was. I, I think it's Biscuit. So we'll most likely see some sort of variation of like the double spot lane comp, uh, which, you know, is what FT Win's been running recently. And yeah, we see, we'll see a single bubble come out, but not the double bubble comp. And we do see, yep, mini plus Nautilus coming out for FT Win here. Yeah, this is looking, you know, very standard weapons to what both of these teams play here. And I'm liking and interested in the fact that Bagel is going uh, mini. So I think that's definitely something to take note here. As Bagel is going to go ahead and pop those minis missiles, there is one down right now on the side, two down right now on the side of FT Win. Three down, it's just Bagel here behind the tower, and that's a complete wipe. The bubbles coming into play as Keen pops those and gets the pick, helps get the picks there. Yeah, and Keen pops those very early, but really that's all they're used to in that engagement. So now they have all their other specials come through. They pop things yet early, but unfortunately find no value. That's not really what you want to see, because now the only other push special you really have is Stingray until the bubbles come back. So hopefully this Stingray finds some value from power, trying to find it on this mini, but Bagel does survive. So the bubbles are coming back through, but they don't really have many other special skill pushings. They again, I was gonna say they need to find value for bubbles, but maybe not if power's gonna hit these shots. Yeah, that is amazing as we get through the second checkpoint here. 
Slaughterhouse is just moving their way to this last checkpoint. It looks like they're finally trying to sit. I like that they're safely juggling the tower here, just making sure that their team is all together. And um, they are still sitting here at the third checkpoint, counting through here. Wow, there's two up on both sides here. It looks like Kyo's trying to come in and help stop these uh, jumps in. But I mean, these Slaughterhouse just completely surrounded Kyo there. Did I get the teams wrong, Rissa? Because I, I don't know. Slaughterhouse are going off right now. They look like a really, really well oiled machine. They're playing perfectly and they're, they're stopping FD Win from moving out of that spawn. It looks like FD Win will finally find some space, but such a nice torpedo combo with Taylor walking forward. That's going to be two members going down and they're going to be able to go back in. Keen has so much pressure and aggression up on this plat right now. It's going to be so hard for them to walk forward. The jump in splash down as well. Bursty's still alive right now with the armor, but it looks like they'll get him for against any chance to pop it. So that's going to be no armor coming out to defend. Cho has to walk onto power, but he's all alone. It looks like one pick is found, but Cho's going to get taken out as power pops the Stingray. Might have been a bit too early and uh, ambitious, but no, actually, perfect Stingray. Stop from getting towards power. They might be able to break the checkpoint, but it looks like the rider goes down as the EGS pops on the right, and power now finally moves back on power. Oh my gosh, that was a complete wipe, of, wipe on FD win as now Slaughterhouse is pushing the tower towards the end. It's just Keen there. As Soldier jumped in there, it's going to help out Keen. And oh my gosh, and Slaughterhouse is just going to win it just like that. Slaughterhouse what? will win. Your first game of the day here. Predictions boomed. All right. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sure you five hours uh, had a good one on the, this one. Uh, personally, a 5 one So I'm still in the race right now. But yeah, FD Win played amazing. You know, apart from, uh, you know, predictions. If we talk about the gameplay, FD Win will play really, really well. You know, I, I was worried because at some parts it looked like their specials weren't finding, you know, the instant value. But they managed to find so much space with their specials, then their players just walked forwards and they took everyone out and with relative ease, it seemed, at points. And uh, FD Win was really, really struggling to move out their spawn. But, I mean, FD Win's at least happy that they're going to their number one counts pick right here. You know, that that's a good thing for them, at least. Yeah, that is a good thing because that means, you know, they have been practicing this. They know their strat. They know what they want to do. Um... I'm interested if, you know, how different these comps are going to be. It's going to be another tower control map, but it is going to be on Muscle Forge this time. So, oh my gosh, that was crazy. Yeah, another tower control map, but this is like, I, I, I think I was either watching Kyo's stream or Kyo, I was talking to Kyo, and he literally yeah. said, we have Muscle Forge always picked because of me. And uh, <laughs> the reason is, because if you think about Kyo's weapons, Kyo's playstyle, Muscle mm -hmm. Forge TC and Muscle Forge in general has always been such a strong map for how he plays and, you know, with the weapons. If you think about Machine, Tristosher, and even back to the, you know, the Blaster days, you can really, really just walk forwards into their spawn and find so, so much value and pressure by just, again, just walking into their spawn. And it's really hard to kind of drop down into that soft pressure. And it's, it's easy to defend with those weapons too. I think, you know, all of those really short range aggressive Slayer weapons that Kyo likes to play do really well here. Yeah, they do. Uh, especially, yeah, I could see Machine, like you were talking about, being perfect for this map in particular. You know, even sometimes Kyo can break, will break out the tri slosher not saying that he will, but I could see that being a good pick here too. So... That is interesting. I didn't know that Keo said we always pick Muscle Forge. So we're yeah. going to see it right here as we go into the game, too. Yeah, I mean, we're going to see uh, FD win on this map. But, you know, they just lost the tower control to Slaughterhouse in a very dominant fashion. That's not what they want to see. But hopefully, Muscle Forge is going to be the map to turn this around. Yes. And as we start out the match here, it looks like uh, Power is going to be switching over to the Bamboo. And just like I mentioned it, Keo is coming out with that tri slosher. So I again, I can see tri slosher being a great pick for this map. So we are going to go ahead and see that uh, as we come out here. And both of the teams work to get their specials. Yeah, the teams will now work to get their specials as Bistip moves forwards and finds those picks. So yeah, two picks for FD Win. That's going to be looking nice. But the bombers are moving forward into mid. If these find any sort of picks, that could be very scary. But it looks like FD Win managed to kite out and take out Keen. That's very good. Soldier going down late will be a second spawn. The Biscuit does get taken out. Uh, so no... Actually, I was going to say no armor, but it looks like Kyo has armor and... Am I here? Uh-oh. Okay. Oh, uh, no. I thought... I think... Okay, so... I'm still in Am because I, I have a spectator cam. Yeah, me too. I'm currently... Right. Um... I think you DC'd. I, I don't... Did I DC... Wait, are you still watching? I'm still watching because I have the spec cam up. Wait, so I got DC'd? Yes. Oh. Because the match is still going on. Well... Okay. 
I, you know, can I cast, you know, do we cast a... Uh... Sure. Uh, <laughs> Even though no one can see. Do, should we add a radio segment? Can, can you screen share? Or are you not able to? Uh, wait, let me minimize this. Can you put that on your stream? Is that a thing? I don't, I can't put it on. Oh, I could put it on my stream potentially. Oh God, I got another error on Splatoon. Uh... It just Can kicked you... me out of the lobby again. Okay, well, basically, you guys, FD Win here has gotten. They just basically KO'd that right. in that time that we weren't able to watch it on the stream. FT Win KO'd it. All right, so you guys missed the FT Win comeback. Uh, I'm very sorry. I'm going to ask the teams. All right. Uh, could you guys hold uh, IDC? So, uh, all right. It looks like I can get back into the lobby now. I really hope that doesn't happen again, but could you keep screen sharing if it does? Yes. Okay, thank you. I'll, do it. I'll put it back up. Um, and if it does, then I'll get that up on the stream and we'll watch the overhead. Uh, all right. This is, uh, I'm very worried. Sorry, everyone, for the, the slight pause here. This is, uh, this is not what you want to see, but it, it, it happens. It does happen. Um, sometimes my internet fails. Uh, not often. That's why I was pretty, pretty happy to be streaming this, but here today, it failed me. Um, I don't know if I can forgive it. Password is incorrect. Okay, wait, what? Okay, okay, I, I was typing in the wrong password twice now. Okay. This is on me, this is on me, that's on me, that's on me, that's on me. Um, do you have any comments from that match? Uh Well, okay, so I was like kind of watching it overhead as I was trying to uh put that up, but basically FT Win didn't let Slaughterhouse get any points on the board. Slaughterhouse was sitting at a hundred. So I mean it really showed there. I didn't really get to watch it from anyone's specific point of view, but um that it definitely showed through in the points that FT Win is confident in that match. Yeah. So FT Win taking that map pick, but we're going to be going back over to Slaughterhouse map pick. And considering Slaughterhouse, okay, they did just get dominated in that Talc John Moss Forge game. However, um, the Splatoon's new map game. Uh, sorry, uh, sorry. Ugh. However, in TC Anchovy, we saw that they can be dominant today. This is definitely not a Slaughterhouse roster that everyone expect. you know, it's just going to get 5 0 like everyone expected. So now that they're on a map that they want to play, it's gonna. I, 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 I'm feeling much more confident about this team. Yeah, me too. I. Oh, first, can you share your screen with me? Oh yes, thank you. Uh, um. So my team uh, got to scrim slaughterhouse on this map and mode in particular, and this is one of their counter picks that they're very confident in, and they play it so well. They know the perfect positions to get in. So if we're gonna see anything we like, like we saw in that first match, I'm guessing you know they're gonna go into this very confidently. Yeah, definitely. I think, you know, they'll have the confidence of knowing that when they're on a map they like, they can do well. We've already seen that today. They're going to have that confidence going forward. You know, not only have we seen that today, but they've kind of felt that experience next. They're going to be playing with confidence. And now they get a map that they want to play on. It's going to be looking very, very good for And I feel like they're going to be, you know, have really, really high uh, hopes going into this game. Yeah, I agree. And this is something that I would be expecting to see that Slaughterhouse double bubble comp come out. But you know, you know, maybe they're going to switch it up, but I feel like that's something that we're going to see from them, uh, from this. And then, too, I'm wondering from um, the side of FT Win, what weapon picks they're going to have. Yeah, I'll be very interested to see what they play here. I feel like we're going to see a ball point come up from one of their Spotlink players. I feel like it's been Bagel that's been flexing more so since they've just been playing with Biscuits. Uh... Nautilus, I've called him the weapon, but uh, we'll have to see it going into this match right here. It will actually be Bagel on the Nautilus, but Bisk is going to be pulling out the custom Jet Sculpture. Not so you see that, and Bursty on the 96. Very interesting Whoa. weapon picks from the FT Win here. Yeah, there's a lot of different weapon picks from FT Win here. We're seeing the, the Squelcher, we're seeing the 96 from Bursty as opposed to the Junior or the NZAP. And then, uh, yeah, and right away we're seeing the Stingray come out from the side of FT Win as Slaughterhouse is still in control of the zone. 
Yes, yeah, Slaughter has some really good control of the zone right now, and they did pop that Stingray, but not able to find too much value. And Inkjet's popped now in this 3v4, try and turn it around. But again, they're not yet finding anything. They are contesting the zone, but I mean, just uh, Slaughter's kiting back and now retaking it. They do have a lose two of their players now, so FTW could definitely turn this. But it is turnable in any favor, especially with those bubbles. They're putting on so much pressure, they're taking the players down, and that's going to be Slaughter's winning out that engagement and taking control of the map. That was such an important engagement for Slaughterhouse to win, and those bubbles really came into play there. And that's just making it that much harder for FT Win to be able to get into the zone as uh, Bursty's gonna start pushing up. Getting gets two picks uh, with that 96 gal, and now it's just Taylor up as FT Win here is gonna take control of the zone, start pushing up, and start painting the map. They have to watch though, Taylor is over in their street. And that's the advantage of the 96, you know, compared to something like a junior. Yeah, you don't have to paint, you don't have the bombs, but you can just walk forward and you can shoot things like that. Two more members going down with the help of the Stingray uh, on FD win side. We'll just leave Power and Soldier now being forced to go back, but Power gets caught late. That's very bad advantage for the respawns, and Soldier gets caught even later, resetting the bubble cooldown. Now it's going to be a long time before Slaughterhouse can push back in, and that gives a long time to FD win to start pushing forward. But this is a very nice duel from Keen, not letting them get into that spawn with that wall and 10 combo. Yeah, I agree. That was a really good stall from Keen. And now Slaughterhouse has two specials left. It looks like they're going to go ahead and pop that Booyah Bomb and some bubbles as Bagel tries to pop Inkjet to stay alive there, but does get called out by that Booyah Bomb. Now Slaughterhouse is going to go ahead and push back into the zone as they have control. Taylor unfortunately dropping into that fizzy bomb will allow Cho to get that pick, but it looks like he's uh, stuck here and he does get killed mid splashdown. FD win, however, still have the man advantage. They're going to walk forward and they're going to cap zone. Bursty playing so, so aggressively this 96. You can see why he picked it. He wants to take these engagements and you can he's doing really well so far. Inkjet popped. Oh, Soldier getting sniped from across the map. Will force the Slaughterhouse backwards. Most likely not going to be taking this one, but popping the missiles, maybe trying to move back in here. Yeah, uh, Slaughterhouse trying to move back in as uh, specials are popping from the side of FD win. FD win is really trying to put a hold on this right side here to not let Slaughterhouse out of their spawn. And Keen and Power are teaming up here. I love that they're working together to team up, play patiently. Keen's gonna go ahead and pop that curler rush as uh, Keen though was called out as they were starting to try and push up. Lovely shot from Kyo, just hiding there and waiting for the tent to move forward. Very, very good punish. Will allow his team to stay in control. Missiles are making the zone neutral now, but it's still FD win in complete control of the situation. It's also nice to only have one more push. The power going down the start is not going to be nice. A lot of paint to fight to zone though. Keen walking forward right now being a real menace to deal with. And the bubble's going through. Maybe the zone will get turned, but FD win just holding on. Another bubble though will get a pick, but zone still hasn't turned. FD win still have this control. It's a lot more even though, so FD win, uh, Salt House could definitely turn this. Power's backed up right now, and he does get a shot to Biscuit, weakening him, and the zone is still being contested. We do finally have Taylor on the flank taking out Biscuit and the zone will finally, will finally turn into Slaughterhouse's favor as FD win will start to be forced backwards but the engagement could be still going on. Yeah, the engagement still going on here as it's a, essentially a 3v3. It looks like both teams are trying to regroup here. Um, we have FT win popping their armor. Kyo's gonna pop that splash down and that's gonna help them get re-control of the zone here as it's just power up on uh, the side of Slaughterhouse. Power's gonna try to jump out, but Kyo there able to uh, notice that and take advantage of that with that pick. So Kyo's had Slaughterhouse. Sorry. What? I was gonna say, Kyo's had some fire picks this game. Uh, as we say that, he gets another two and he walks up and goes to the third. Oh, the bag. And he's still popping off here in spawn, just adding all this pressure in a Slaughterhouse's spawn. That confidence is really going to help them uh, get through these last 10 points. Only five more points to go. Joe's going to be on the side angle now. He's going to try and push pressure on Phalanx, but not enough time. Slaughterhouse on their map pick will get knocked out. And that's going to be FD Win taking the lead 2-1, saying, yep, okay, we made some amazing mistakes, you know, on the first map. We're back and we're going to war you over. Yeah, that was, I mean, that was really close there for a little while. I love the way that Slaughterhouse was working together to try and pair up. Um, but once FT Win it was able to get advantage there, they really took it there and really made sure that they got it. Yeah, it, I, I, well, I, you know, I say rolled over. I'm sure that's how FT Win feel, but it wasn't actually a roll over there for sure. You know, they had some really, really nice, as, as you said, once they got control, it really felt like they were securing it very, very well. But FT Win, uh, sorry, Slaughterhouse, once again, they had a lot of signs of hope in that game. Uh, you know, uh, this is definitely not a uh, a team that I'm worried about, even that they have now lost these two maps, because that, that looked a lot closer. It did look like I had hope in it, but, uh, you know, FT Win were playing it very, very well. Potentially, you know, scary to bring FT Win, uh, to a map like that because it looks like they've really really had it on lockdown what they're doing i suppose like it, it makes sense um you know you look at how fd win traditionally play and you're like mm -hmm. okay you know splat zones are because seems like a good pick against the way they play but 
they come up with some weapon picks we've not seen from some of these players. Like, when, have we seen Biscuit play customs yet and Bertie play 96 in the past, like, year or longer? Like, I, I don't mm -hmm. think so. No, we haven't. Those weapon picks actually surprised me because even in, past, like, recent tournaments I've commentated um, with FG Win playing, uh, you know, I have not seen them play those weapons. So that was really interesting. Because I feel like Biscuit was primarily a backline player a while ago. And so he, I'm sure he will have played Customs yet, but I wouldn't be surprised if that's the first time Bursi's played 96, like, ever, honestly. <laughs> Unless he, like, tried it in the early game because uh, a very unconventional pick, but it worked out so well. And, you know, that's why I love to see, you know, People think of, oh, this team's going to play this comp, but they, they come out with a different comp and they do so, so well with it. And that, I say that's why they took them out because Slaughterhouse were thrown through a loop. They were expecting to play FD win on their usual comp on that map, which, you know, would be advantageous to them, but coming out with something new and doing really well with it. Yeah, I really, yeah, I've never, ever seen Bursty play 96. So, and he was popping off with that 96. I, I've seen a few Japanese teams, whenever Albacore Zones comes on, they always, for their armor weapon, will pick the 96. So I think I think that's starting to be a really good pick for Albacore zones for armor players. Okay, I think I think it makes a lot of sense. Like, not just because, you know, obviously it's a, a, a long-range map, so it is nice to, uh you know, be able to take engagements from that sort of distance. But if you also think about the fact that there's so much ground in the map that you can just cover so quickly from a range of 96 that you wouldn't have to, you know, walk into with Junior, you can farm some armors really, really quickly. Um, as mm -hmm. well as that, I'd say, since it's so big and open, you wouldn't find the same value with bomb spam as you would on other maps. Like, if you think about Inkblot, you know, you can just sit back on your plat, throw bombs at zone, game after game after game, and find, mm -hmm. you know, really, really, really high value. But I feel like on a map like Albacore, yeah, bomb spam, of course it's always effective. Bomb spam, you know, it's never going to be bad, but it's potentially less effective effective which you know would kind of lead you to favor the 96 yeah totally i agree you know you have to make use of the sprinkler um but the range that it offers as an armor weapon is really something that's uh good for that map and mode and now we will be going into game four which is going to be clam blitz on snapper canal and uh we're going to see here in just a second what weapons both of these teams are going to pick yep. Clam Blitz on Snap Canal. I'm not sure if I'd say it particularly favors either team. I say the Slaughterhouse definitely would like to play Clam Blitz, you know. We've seen them do really, really well in this map mode, and we do see them playing a lot of their classic clicks right here. We've got the Double Bubble, we've got the 10. It's a Slaughterhouse Classic. Yes, this is a Slaughterhouse Classic, you know, Bamboo Tent Squeezer. I mean, this is them in a nutshell. And then on the other side of FT Win, uh, looks like Bagel is going to be coming back out with that mini, so I think that's something interesting. Yeah, back onto the mini north. So, you know, the very aggressive kind of Bokon Nation style comp in a way. Even though this is, you know, the exact team. But there will be two members of FTWIN going down early. Slaughterhouse finding confidence in this map, but Taylor, plenty of bit too much confidence, goes forward and gets taken out. But Kyo on the side angle right now is going to try and fight people, but no, not sneaky enough this time. But Splashdown will actually come in major use, breaking the shield and letting the Inkjet find enough value to Kyo to finish him off. And there will be FTWIN with the man advantage, able to move up with a lot of control and a lot of flams right now. Yeah, FT win here, moving up with advantage. It looks like uh, Taylor gonna get called out there as Taylor tried to push up there. Now FT win is in a great position here to start pushing up, score clams, and continue to score clams. It looks like though, uh, those bubbles came out from Soldier and helped stop that push and regain a lot of map control with the bubbles as well. Yeah, th those bubbles, like, I, I saw that and it was like, the map just went from FD win having control to no. And that's how useful bubbles are, yeah. how quickly they can turn things. You know, you take it out member, you cover that much ground, it's so, so good. And now pushing up aggressively with another pair of bubbles, you know, another set of bubbles ready. And, uh... Inkjet and Hammer, they can find a lot of value. But the Inkjet will push them back early, so popping that early and moving them out of your spawn is a very smart idea for FD win. So it's more times won't be able to, you know, just walk in. Yeah, I love that that uh, Inkjet stops Slaughterhouse from having any momentum to push in. Slaughterhouse has all their specials ready. Right now they have 22 clams. Looks like they are gearing up for a really big push here, and they're trying to be very careful with it. Though two go down, Soldier and Taylor are going to go down as they started trying to get that push going. Keen popping that hammer is going to get a trade with that, but FT win here uh, was able to capitalize on that and now has advantage and is already pushed up to the basket. And that's the thing, Risa. You know, I, I feel like a broken record when I'm saying I want to see more teams, you know, kite back, bait out specials and go and use theirs. But the problem is, Stolzhaus just waited too long there. You know, yeah, it's nice to make them waste their specials. The way you're just sitting there and sitting there, eventually uh, FD Win just found so much space and so much value that they didn't need to give away. And then they just walked in before Stolzhaus used everything. Eventually, you've got to press that arsenic and you've got to, you know, let them loose. Yeah, you do have to uh, make sure that you are on it, adding to aggression. Um, right now here, we're seeing, looks like, I love the way uh, FT Win tried to work and group together there to take care of that left hill, but two went down on the side of FT Win, so FT Win here having to back up 
as we're seeing specials starting to pop from both teams. Specials will be getting ready as Sword House now has four. And Inkjet getting popped as Keen starts moving down the street will allow him to get this push going. Sword House, uh, so they're gonna need to find this score soon though because FT Wins still control a lot of their place and they're gonna be able to keep doing it. A nice trade will stop the armor coming out, but F Sword House only have two members left alive. One far away on a flank. I don't find, that much, find much value for this push unless Power just pops off and gets all these fans in. Yeah, Power here trying to sneak in uh, on the left side here, getting a few clams in, so adding to uh, their kill pound. There's a jump in with the clam, but unfortunately that was called out there for Slaughterhouse, so... Um, oh my gosh, and Taylor there sneaking in the... the what is that? The right side there, getting a few more clams in, so th they're actually making the score that much closer. They did make the score that much closer, but they still didn't take that lead. That jump, I thought was going to turn it, but like, I was like, insane play with Sword House for the jump, but then first he just completely turned it perfectly timed bomb. You know he has that down, but that's going to be uh, the hammer coming out from the left side, but Keen backs up, he sees all the members, he's like, okay, I'm not going to feed this hammer, just waits and throws it, tries to find a pick, but he does find the right pressure to start being able to move in. Now, two members of uh, FT Wind going down and one on the respawn, so it will be Sword House being able to take some control, but they don't still have, you know, a ton of them up. FT Wind definitely holding some ground here. Yes, and uh, I don't... Oh, Kyo here has this power clam and pulled off the flank, though. So, you know, is obviously sticking out like a sore thumb here. And that's actually putting all of Slaughterhouse's attention on that flank. Though Keen here trying to uh, take advantage of that and push up around that was it there, but uh, FT Win scored the clam in. So that was a clam block if I ever seen one. You know when we saw Kyo just sitting on that flank earlier and I was like, what is he doing? Well, it paid off. It really paid off because, you uh -huh. know, not only do you get that little bit of scoring, that's not the vi main fi uh, value you're finding. The main value is you just made Swordhouse walk away and walk to their spawn to make sure no other camps get in and walk away from it. You made them give up so, so much ground when they were going to get a push there and now they have one opportunity and they don't have a ton of ground. They do start popping some special moving to their street, so this is their last opportunity, but they need to find value fast before actually get a good defense. Yeah, they do. We're seeing uh, Slaughterhouse here trying to throw clams together, trying to make a power climb as we go into the last 15 seconds here. Power is going to get called out by Bagel's uh, missiles, though it's a 2v2 right now. I don't think Slaughterhouse has a power climb yet, so they really need to work on getting a power climb if they want to make it to overtime here. They have the power clamp, but they're going to need to use power time to, uh, sorry, overtime to the full effect. Keen trying to find some fire with the hammer, but not able to find anything just yet. And with Taylor going down, this hammer needs to find something, but it doesn't. It does finally find Bursty, though. And another member going down, so Slaughterhouse could definitely get this push going. And a third, but power needs to score quickly. That's a wipe. Slaughterhouse could definitely win this now. They have the climbs needed. They're going to start scoring, and that's going to be it. Slaughterhouse turning it in the last few minutes, bringing this series to 2-2. Two, two. Wow. That was a very, very, very impressive uh, last push there from Slaughterhouse. They they were, you know, synergizing very well. They at the last millisecond they got a power clam in, and I mean that was that was great from both teams. That. Honestly, it just looked like FT wins game, Rissa. That, that was like, yeah. they did have that kind of nice push in the middle that could have turned stuff. But honestly, the entire time, it just felt like FT wins game through and through. But that turnaround at the end, the patience from Slaughter House, you know, I was saying, okay, you know, uh, you know, they need they need to play this fast. They need to find quick value. But genuinely, they uh, they, they took it slow and, you know, they're, 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 they're the players for a reason, right? <laughs> they had the right call, they played it slow, and FD would unfortunately found themselves caught out, a wipe, and that game got turned, and that's what can happen. FD win selecting their weapons quickly, and it's back to an FD win map pick. So, uh, Slaughterhouse, you know, I said I feel like Slaughterhouse has paged these neutral maps today, but Slaughterhouse, sorry, FD win, but Slaughterhouse has won all the neutrals so far. So, we're going to be going into an FD win pick, and I'm always really scared of fighting FD win on their map picks, because they're really smart, you know, of, um, I feel like they're really smart with where they want to go, but Slaughterhouse hopefully going to be able to find some value since it is Clamblitz, which is something they like. Yeah, this is something that they like, um, and it's going to be... Oh my gosh, I mean, with that last Clamblitz match we just saw, I, I don't know what's going to happen here as we go into this. Yeah, I, I, I genuinely don't know what's going to happen, but I would be scared if I was Slaughterhouse purely down to the fact that FD Win always know what to pick. I, f I feel like FD Win are uh, probably one of the smartest teams in Tassel for not just picking a really bad map for them. Uh, so there's probably a reason they're going here. They are putting up Soda Slash and not something we see every day. And again, a standard comp. We see the bamboo, we see the double bubble. It's Slaughterhouse. Yeah, we're seeing that double bubble comp that we were talking about in the beginning of this come out. And uh, right now, as the game starts to play out, FT Win here doing a, a great job at taking control of mid. And there's three down on the side of Slaughterhouse here. So Bursty is going to go ahead and score that clam in. FT Win is going to continue to score clams in. And Keen here is trying to pop bubbles uh, defensively. 
was called out though. Looks like there was a trade that happened there. So finally Slaughterhouse is starting to trickle back in and call out uh, FT win here to stop this push. A 30 second push down to 41 is something you'd love to see if you're FT win, right? And they're still in their spawn. They've got another power climb on the way. Look how far back Slaughterhouse are forced by this ink chat. And FT win is still finding value. Ooh, almost had a pick. If they found that pick, I, I would have went off. But, uh, you know, l luckily for your guys, it is. Biscuit didn't find it. And it will be for FT win now being forced back a bit. But Bursi's scoring clans as people are getting more from mid. And they're still control. Slaughterhouse are so scared to drop right now when they need to eliminate these people. But they finally get the bubble to do it. But they've already got it down to 20 in a minute, Rissa. Yeah, that is so many points to have on the board within the first minute of a Clan Blitz match. And right now, it looks like there's finally a full wipe on the side of FT win. Slaughterhouse is going to go ahead and grab their Pity Clam, grab as many Clams as they can as Taylor here is starting to push up to uh, start this push with uh, popping that inkjet. And now, looks like everyone on Slaughterhouse is trying to uh, paint around, get their special, so that way they can get a strong counter push in. Slaughterhouse has 26 Clams, I want to notate too, so they have the potential for a strong push. Yeah, they could definitely get a big push here with 24 clams on the running. This is going to be big, but FT win now move in. They have control of mid, and it looks like they're going to, you know, stop that push. Bubbles are being popped. They're trying to stop this right now. Keen does not find anyone yet, but, no, but enough damage on the show. will eventually find the pick with his uh, ability. Sorry, that was Soldier on the side then. Uh, but now getting taken out. Three numbers going down for uh, FT win. A power cam coming through with some bubbles from Keen, and that's going to be a push on the running. Yeah, finally here, Slaughterhouse able to get this push in here. Get Gonna get two power climbs in. And it looks like we have a few other follow-up clams that they're gonna go ahead and score in the basket. Now it's gonna be up to FG Win here to be able to try and stop this push as Slaughterhouse is continuing to trickle in with clams, keep throwing in clams, uh, and continue this push. They're very close to getting the lead. Taylor coming from top, but brilliantly identified from Bursty and Kyo. They know, all right, we have everything covered. Where are they going to come from? They immediately move up, and they don't let Taylor get in. Taylor then, you know, forced to move away, and he can't score any of the clams. Down to 24 is big, though, but the lead is still staying in FD Win's favor. So as long as they've been playing, you know, as well as they did at the start of the game, they can easily keep the control. But, I mean, that's how it looked last time, Racer, and we know how that turned out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I am having flashbacks of that last match. We know exactly how that played out here. And with the score this close, I mean, this could go in any direction here. As uh, right now, FG Win has 19 clams on the board. Bursty here with this clam, gonna head and gonna go ahead and score it in. Um, looks like they do have one down on their side, but that's, they're not gonna let that stop them. As there's two down on the side of Slaughterhouse, FT Win is gonna continue to score clams in. FT Win puts it down to seven. Slaughterhouse are gonna need a killer push to get this, because not only do they have, you know, 24 points to break through, but they also have that 38 penalty. So they need to get such a big push, or even multiple, to get this game. And there's only a minute 30 left, so we're gonna need to see some killer plays come out from them. But they do have the bubbles at the ready, so I wouldn't be surprised if we see that sort of turnaround. Yeah, I agree. I would not be surprised if you see the turnaround here as Keen is going to go ahead and pop those bubbles that they have, uh, hoping to get some picks with those and act using those almost as a shield uh, as looks like one is down now on the side of FT Win here. Slaughterhouse, there's three down on the side of FT Win here. Slaughterhouse has 17 clams. Looks like Keen's going to go ahead and pop up here and score that clam in and we're going to see if Slaughterhouse can get the rest of their clams in. They get all the clams in, but again, Risa, that's the thing I was saying before. Slaughterhouse just completely dominated that push. They got like two wipes in a row, but the lead that FT Win has is too strong. But more clams are going through, and that's going to be it. Lead from Slaughterhouse and a power comes through. Not the knockout, but a one point lead in the last minute of the game. Only 40 seconds left for FT Win to turn this. Wow. This is insane for this match. I mean, we're going into the last 30 seconds. The lead is literally off by one point here. You know, it's going to really be dependent on who can get picks here as we go into the last 20 seconds of this match. Soldier jumping out, so there's only two members of uh, Slaughterhouse on main. He really didn't want to get taken out there, and it's understandable. Pressure is high right now. They have bubbles and missiles, and they're using those bubbles. Keen walking off the mid and finding three! That's going to be Keen <laughs> stopping FD win in the last 10 seconds of the game, and not letting him get that push. The wipe coming through, and no shot anymore. That's going to be Slaughterhouse walking into their spawn, denying that last power climb, and stopping FD win from turning this around. I mean, <laughs> unless, unless... <laughs> Unless we go to overtime, uh, right now there's Taylor down on the side of Slaughterhouse though. Bubbles coming up from the side of Slaughterhouse here. Gonna act very defensively. Bursty trying to come in here and score this clam in. Does score the clam in. Oh my god! Oh my god! The game what? tied! <laughs> the game tied with- I, I DC'd. I did but, but I'm- Okay. The, the, I, I'm guessing Kyo shut down the lobby.
I'm guessing um, he, you know, pulled a, a moment where he hit his desk or something. All right. Well, unfortunately, the lobby goes down. Um, Joe was hosting. So take with so that what you will. Note, take note of that. Um, I don't want to comment too much on that. But yeah, that's going to be Slaughterhouse turning that around. And uh, yeah, three, two lead for Slaughterhouse, Rissa. Um, who predicted this? Does anyone want to come out and say? And no, no, okay, okay. First off, actually, don't because we all know you're lying. No one predicted this. No one did. Really, like, really. This is this is. I'm really glad that you and I, of all people, are getting to watch this yeah. and commentate this because this is just. I love. Okay, I honestly love both of these teams so much. So this is just some amazing gameplay that we're getting right. to see from them. Just a correction because I don't want to slander. Bursty was the host, not Kyo. So don't go flaming Kyo. Um, okay. And quote unquote, Kyo, he slammed his desk so hard his switch came out. So it happens. It's unfortunate. Uh, heated moments, but FD will still have time to turn this around. And they're going to need to go into a Slaughterhouse counter pick coming up next, Rissa. Ooh, so Slaughterhouse counter pick coming up here. Um, let's see. One moment. Just trying to rejoin the. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm. St oh, wait, I was. Uh, I had my thing over. I'm currently waiting on someone to join the lobby, but yeah. So we're going to have Slaughterhouse counter pick, and that counter pick is going to be Rainmaker Starfish main stage. Again, it, it, it's like another one of those maps where I see these counter picks from each team, and I'm like, okay, I can see why you'd pick this, but at the same time, I feel like the other team is not going to struggle too much here. Yeah, I agree. I could, you know, this is, if it, this is Slaughterhouse's counter pick, I could see, um, I don't think FT Win's going to have that hard of a time on this map. Um, so I think this is going to be a good game. Yep, it's going to be a good game indeed. I mean, uh, I, I honestly, I, I'm not going to lie, right? When I watched that first map, I just felt like it was a fluke. I, 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 look, you guys can all flame me, but as much as I was trying to hype it up eternally, I literally just thought, okay, that's a fluke. FD win are going to turn their brains on and turn this around. Most likely going to be a 5-1. Um, sorry for lying to all of you. But that's the truth now. The truth is coming out. That's what I thought, but Slaughterhouse is proving me wrong. Slaughterhouse proving that they are a team that is here to stay. And if I'm not wrong, I technically don't think they're eliminated from the playoffs yet. So this could be huge. Yeah, this could be this could be the set that Slaughterhouse really needs. And of of against FT1 of all teams, I mean this is just some insane Splatoon that we're getting to watch. Uh it is some insane Splatoon you're going to watch. I'm just gonna comment on uh yep, the map colors are wrong for the counter picks. I didn't actually know uh that's what Kbot meant when he was color coding them. And I changed the colors around because I promised Kyo he could be Bravo. Um, but I didn't change those colors around. So that's why I didn't actually know that they were color coded for map counter picks. So just, I I'm sorry. It is wrong on the right hand side, but you guys just have to trust me. <laughs> the, uh, the next map we are going into is going to be a uh, Slaughterhouse counter pick. I love to, I love getting to watch uh, high level Splatoon teams play Rainmaker because it's my favorite mode. So I'm yeah. definitely excited to watch the way the, the, the take that both of these teams are going to have for this. And it's definitely not a common map mode either. Um, n not at all. I feel like, sorry, a map mode, just mode in general, you know. I feel like mm -hmm. most uh, teams definitely end up preferring, uh, you know, I feel like Clamlets and Splat Zones, I'd say, for competitive players, are normally the most favoured, uh, you know, like kind of their favourites. But a lot of teams mm -hmm. also can't pick the tower control because, you know, it suits that sort of aggressive style a lot of teams go to. We rarely see Rainmaker come out. So I feel like whenever we see it, it's always like nice and refreshing. It's interesting to see, you know, why they're going to pick it and uh, what they're going for here. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And um, as we're going to go ahead and see both of the teams come out here, uh, we're going to see that ball point come out from the side of FT Win that we, you were talking about. So uh, ball point's coming out. Kyo's going to play the tri slasher, And uh, on the side of Slaughterhouse, the one main change I'm seeing is uh, the Brella. Yes, the Brella coming out. And as soon as I saw that, I, w I was excited because we've seen Keen on the Brella and he has been popping off. Unfortunately, the team does go down. FD when getting an early wipe is going to be huge for them, especially on a small map like this. They really don't want to lose after this and they're going to be moving forward quickly. It is going to be Slaughterhouse on the top right angle, but oh, Taylor gets first. You just saw everyone look at him immediately. It's already down 30 points and FD when popping the inkjet. They do unfortunately go down. Soldier on the side does get a pick, but there's three members down for FD, uh, Slaughterhouse with spawns coming in. So if FD can get some more members, this could be more of a push and a push to 12 is actually crucial getting over that bump yes that was a very very strong very strong push to have within the first uh minute of this match and uh slaughterhouse here gonna go ahead and grab the rainmaker and 
I like that they're pushing the Rainmaker out as opposed to uh, resetting it because uh, that way their team can follow up and get paint map around them. Uh, but right now though, Slaughterhouse is going to have to get in a position to get mid control again. Yeah, they're going to need to get mid control right now again, but right now FT Win has it all. They do take the Rainmaker on the left side, so unfortunately they don't, they don't really you know, kind of have that presence on the middle of the map. And FT Win are able to turn... Go through, but that's going to be Bursty falling off the map. That's so unfortunate. Leaving his team one down and uh, resetting the armor. That's actually very, very staring now for his team. Yeah, um, FT Window stand, standing up here confidently uh, holding the front line here. Um, and looks like someone tried to grab the Rainmaker, but oh, it looks like someone probably accidentally grabbed it and it just kind of stopped there. So FT Win here going to go ahead and have Bursty grab that Rainmaker. Bubbles coming out though from the side of Slaughterhouse. Taylor going to pull off a really good flank here, getting a good pick on Keo. Is going to get called out though. Let's get cooled out, and now only these three members of uh, FT Win left alive. They do have, you know, kind of the control, the presence on mid, but uh, Slaughterhouse definitely is still currently standing on it. But it looks like they will find a pick off that. Keen going really, really aggressively in this brother. I love seeing how aggressively Keen plays this weapon and how much he gets him over there. He doesn't quite find the second pick there, but he leaves so much time, you know, FT Win looking to the left, and now Slaughterhouse can start moving towards mid with a lot of control. But that ain't Jet. <laughs> yes, that ink Jet, uh, and that helping from Taylor there. There's actually only one up. It's just Kyo up on the side of FT Win. So Slaughterhouse is finally in a position to be able to grab the Rainmaker. Though Kyo was sharking there in that left attic and it's gonna drop down, get a one pick uh, with that shark though. Keen has control of the Rainmaker here and he's gonna start pushing it left. Keen is gonna start pushing that Rainmaker left. The armor is popped from FT Win though for this defense. And they're gonna start moving forward, but no other specials are running quite yet. So is getting taken down early and Keen being stuck in the corner. I think this should be the push stopping, but actually Taylor going forward to finding first his pick, but the Cho on the flank finds too. Cho's playing so aggressively this game. You can tell he doesn't want to lose. Yeah, Keo is really putting in work with that tri slosher. Keo is definitely not in this to lose. As uh Keo is doing a really good job at sharking around, making sure he's dropping to get really crucial picks. And I like that FG win here for them. They grab the Rainmaker again. They're making sure that Slaughterhouse can't get position. It's in a position to grab it and just making it that much harder for Slaughterhouse. They are making it that much harder for Slaughterhouse, but Slaughterhouse now have control of the entire mid. We've seen this, even when they get control of the entire mid, Slaughterhouse normally, sorry, FT Win normally delays enough time and then get a big, but this time's different. They have a lot of control. They get a late pick there and they're gonna start moving forward. It looks like Soul just not grab it. It looks like they have someone they wanna grab because of the, that makes sense, right? You wanna keep your bubbles online, you wanna keep your inject missiles online so you get keen to grab the Rainmaker. You've already used bomb much. That's smart, but it does mean the push is gonna be a bit slower. Because of that, the income of Inkjet might be able to capitalize off that slower push where FT Win, but the missiles will helpfully, uh, will hopefully help them yeah um and now the taylor is going to be called out here by keo it's going to go down as the slaughterhouse did try and start their push now keo going to get in that position again in the attic this has been a really good good position for keo to be in this whole match and is going to pull off this flank for the, try and get the rainmaker though the rainmaker is being pushed by slaughterhouse it looks like it was finally stopped yeah, that, that looks really scary. That looks very, yeah, very scary yeah. from Kyo's point of view. But the rest of the team had it on lockdown, but Kyo is still caught out by power there. And the team is going to start coming back in, so Slaughterhouse definitely have control of the situation, and it could be up to a force. But the problem is special economy once again. They only have the missiles to push, and that's not going to be enough, unless Taylor can really, really quickly find some fire with the Zinja. But maybe that will be enough. They do get to pick up the first team with the missiles, and that's going to be team going down the left, and will make this a very, very even situation. But FC win right now, look how passive they're playing. They're not letting Slaughterhouse to look, you know, move forwards. Yeah, FT Win is doing a great job at playing very defensively here. Um, Slaughterhouse knows that they need to pick up the Rainmaker here as we're going into the last 10 seconds. Power is going to grab the Rainmaker and hold on to it here in mid as he tries and waits for his teammates. Uh, FT Win, though, I like that FT Win is kind of staying back, playing defensively, letting, almost trying to just wait for the Rainmaker to come to them. And it looks like they finally got that full wipe besides Power on Slaughterhouse and Joe were able to just call out the Rainmaker. Do any of the teams actually want to win, like, their maps? I, 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 don't, I don't know. Like, we just, it, it, it looks like they were picking for each other today, or maybe I maybe I did input it wrong after all, and, uh, you know, I'm getting the counter picks going around, but no, that, I, I didn't. That will actually be uh, FD win picking up the Slot House uh, map, so they're turning this back around into their favor, making it a 3-3 situation, once again, tying up the series, Rissa, and a neutral map pick, Splat Zone's Makomart, however, it's, it's, it's Makomart. That just feels FD win to me. Makomart, that does end, especially since Keo has been playing that tri-slosher. This is 
yeah. you know, one of the best tri slosher maps. So I can see Keo bringing that out on this map in particular and popping up with that. I mean, in general, I feel like when you look at um, these... Right, brain work. When you look at the next three maps, because, you know, <laughs> the series is now tied up as a 3-3. Three, three. So the only thing we need to look at now is the next three maps, because whoever wins, you know, two out of these has won the entire series. It's Blackstone's Black Out, TC Mac and Calm, that's Kelp Dome. I can't help but feel like FD Winner happy going to those last three maps, right? Because they peaked Tower Control Makamart themselves. Splat Zones Makamart, again, is one of the maps they picked. And last one, Clambert's Kelp Dome, definitely Slaughterhouse favor. So Slaughterhouse, they just need to turn around one of the next two maps, you know? I feel like if they allow themselves to drop one of the Makamarts, they could definitely, definitely win that final map. So all they need to do is bring it to nine. And if they bring it to nine, I think it's a Slaughterhouse victory. But... So FD would need to make sure that they stay dominant on their maps. Because if they drop a single one of them, Slaughterhouse are going to look scary in that last one. Yeah, I agree with that. Especially the way they've been playing from what these matches we've been watching. I mean, Slaughterhouse is playing so good today. So I agree. They're really FD win is really going to have to watch out and be careful. All comes down to these next maps, Rissa. Power and Taylor... You know, maybe getting the, the last minute coach again, the last minute pace, whatever's happening, and they're taking their time. They want to be ready going into this last map. And understandably so. This is a huge map for your team because they can still make playoffs. If they take this series today, they can still make playoffs with a lot of these close games. And that's going to be what is happening here. FD win and Slaughterhouse, Splat Zones, Makamar, neutral map coming through. All right, and as we see the weapon comps come out here, Power going to go ahead and switch over from the bamboo to that trusty splatter scope. And then on the side of FT win, um, we are seeing that ballpoint come back out and Keo going to be on that tri -slash. Joe is going to be on that tri -slash. Again, the splat bubble tri -slash. So once we have splat bubble, it makes sense for Makamar when you think about it. But the bubbles are now coming out for Keen. We've seen how much they can do in this game. And Bursi is walking away. He doesn't want any of that business. Allowing Slaughterhouse that control of the zone and losing vi uh, Biscuit is going to be very, very bad for the Sorry, that's uh, Bagel, I believe, on the Nautilus. I'm so used to Nautilus being Biscuit. Yes, and right now uh, there is there's two down basically on the side of FT Win here as Slaughterhouse is working to push up, get control of the zone, does get control of the zone, and they don't have any penalty right now, so they're sitting in a really good position here as they have control of the zone and their points start counting down. And now Power able to get push up and get in a really really good position as the Charger um, player and is able to get in a good position to watch this. They're in a good position to watch the team, and the bubble's coming out, denying all of that in-jet value. Really, really smart. But unfortunately, Taylor on the other side of the map will get taken out, leaving Slaughterhouse one man down. But the bubble's come through right now. This can turn so much. We've seen it happen before. It gets only one pick. So we'll be in a 3v3 situation. FD win retake the zone, and it looks like they will have the control to move up on power and take him out. They now have a lot of control, and they have armor getting into this final fight uh, right here. But power has that stingray, and they have the inkjet coming online. So as soon as they start moving forward, this could be really, really good for Slaughterhouse. But the armor is there, ready to counter it. Yeah, I love that Bursty is holding on to that armor because they know that they want to wait for that Stingray to come out as exactly that happens as we're watching uh, Power Stingray does pop, Bursty pop the armor. Power though, gonna get a great kick on Bursty there with the Stingray and Bubbles coming out from the side of Slaughterhouse as well. So that was a really great push, even though they knew they weren't gonna, they were gonna give up lead there, they waited for a big push. But now FG Win has turned and now has got control back of the zone. They have control of the zone and Soldier goes down late. That's going to reach out his bubble and that's going to send him back to the spawn room. Power getting picked up. Power, sorry. Power getting a very nice pick though. Taking out Bagel is going to be very, very good for his team. The cloud does get popped early. Trying to move away Slaughterhouse on the right side. That is actually very, very nice. The keys already all the way in the zone with the bubbles. The inkjet coming through and, uh, sorry, just the inkjet bubbles coming through. Will be trying to find some value, but nothing quite yet. That will be Biscuit finally getting taken down alongside the Stingray coming through. Will finally allow Slaughterhouse to start moving forward. They take up the zone, but there's two of them down. So Soldier and Power need to turn this hard. Yeah, they uh, just two up on the side of Slaughterhouse. Looks like Keo is going to go ahead and start pushing up here, waiting to get in a position to shark and, you know, potentially get a pick here. Slaughterhouse trying to regroup yet again, get their specials. Though power is going to go down. Now Soldier going down as well. So it's just Keen and Taylor up. And now it's just Keen up as a uh, as FT Win has control of the zone yet again. King does go for it. I respect the play, but unfortunately, he doesn't quite find the bubble combo. The torpedo not locking on, but he's can't go for the one shot. But Joe gets taken out either way, but not at the, but only at the same time Taylor does, making it an even situation. Going into the last 20 points with the inkjet being popped, 
This is going to be very, very hard for Slotow to make this comeback. But they do have both Bubbles and Stingray ready. So this is going to be where they need to use them. All six Bubbles going on his own. Will cap the zone. As well as the Biscuit. Uh, ba biscuit getting taken down. Stop having two Spotlight players on your team. Will allow Slotow in the last two minutes to turn it over. Not allowing FT Win to get that knockout. Yeah, that was a great, great uh, push there. And now FT Win does have a penalty of 52. So now as... Uh Slaughterhouse is able to start pushing up here. One does go down. The ball point player does go down as Slaughterhouse has pushed up here. Slaughterhouse, I want to note too, doesn't have any penalty. So if they can hold this for this whole uh, last 30 seconds, they could uh, potentially take this. They could definitely take this right now. Bubbles getting pumped tonight now. EGFI, but Taylor revealing himself. Will get taken out. Try and take it out, but the armor not allowing him. Bubbles going through on the side right now. Will potentially be huge for everyone too far away. Soldier right now caught out in a bit of a bad situation and will get taken out going into this final minute. But with this penalty point, there's definitely enough time for Slothouse to turn this round, especially with that pick on Joe. Cloud getting popped. Will be trying to take out Taylor and will do it. That's very bad for house now. FD would have a lot of... Uh, sorry, there's not much time and uh, FD would could definitely close this out here. I know we're going into the last 40 seconds here. Looks like Slaughterhouse is going to go ahead and pop bubbles. Have keen pop bubbles. Power is going to pop that Stingray as well. And one does go down. Bursty is going to go down on the side of FT win here as uh, Slaughterhouse tried so hard to get a position to get the zone, but unfortunately we're able to get it. So FT win is going to go ahead and take that game. FD win, take the game and put themselves up four to three. Only one more map needed. It's been a roller coaster of a series, and I'm sure a roller coaster of emotions for both of these teams. But now there's only two more maps to decide the thing. Tower Control Mako Mart is going to be the next one, though. And it's Tower Control Mako Mart and FD win. Slaughterhouse, I feel like are going to struggle coming up here. They're going to need to come out with some huge plays. But I mean, I say that, but think about Tower Control Anchovy. That, to, like, I feel like everyone screamed FD win map in my mind. But we saw how it went. Mm -hmm. We did. We did see how that went. I mean, Slaughterhouse really, really dominated that first TC uh, anchovy game. So, I agree. This set is crazy. Shout out Splatoon for being awesome. I didn't know. Uh, <laughs> bit of luck. I, I thought I had all alerts disabled, but it turns out the bit alerts are broken and break through it. So, uh, <laughs> I, I mean, I'll thank the bits and yeah, shout out to being awesome, but I, I need to, uh, I need to work on that. Uh, <laughs> I, I was really thrown off when I heard that massive ding. I, I, <laughs> oh no, I please. I too. I thought that was like I'm on my stream or something. I was like, what? I'm begging that you guys don't do any more bitter lads for now. I appreciate it. I really do. But for the VOD, for the integrity of this crazy series, please try not to spam the bitter lads uh, as we go in to map eight of the series racer. FD Win and Slothouse are going to be coming out. Same comp we saw on Anchovy Games, so potentially they could come out huge. But here it is, the double Nautilus from FD Win. Ooh, okay. I love... I actually love uh, there, there, there. Bagel and Biscuit to play that double Nautilus here. So as we start to come out here, it looks like uh, Bursty is going to go ahead and pop armor for their teammates. And now FT Win has gotten a complete wipe on Slaughterhouse as they have pushed the tower all the way here to the first checkpoint. And now they're going to continue getting points on the board as uh, Bagel's popping up with that inkjet. Yep, they have the inkjet ready. They don't f quite find the pace. They do have the second one coming through, though. Double inkjet on the team. Will mean Taylor goes down. There's only 50 points remaining. This is so, so good for FT win. But Power does find that pick, so they could turn this around. I mean, we've seen Slaughterhouse come back. So as long as they can turn the tower here, they could come back in this uh, game. Yes, we could see it definitely come back here as we still have four minutes left on the board of this match. Uh, three are going to go down on the side of FT win here as Slaughterhouse starts pushing up. Calls out the last member there of FT win. And now that's essentially a complete wipe on FT win here as Slaughterhouse starts pushing up, is getting control of the zone here. And Soldier getting a nice pick there on Keo with Taylor popping that inkjet. We're having the bubbles popped as well. So I love the, the momentum that Slaughterhouse has as they're trying to push the tower here. Slaughterhouse have the momentum exactly as you said, Rissa, but they don't quite have the specials. I mean, I've said that a lot today, but it's true. They didn't quite have the specials and they weren't able to push up because of that. FT win had that armor and inkjet, so they can just move forward and they can wipe out Slaughterhouse. Not much of a push on their, uh, you know, on the board considering FT wins, but at least they broke the first checkpoint. Yeah, that first checkpoint is definitely a good marking point for uh, Slaughterhouse to have on the board. Though, um, we're Let's seeing the armor and the jet pop up. 
Alright, I'm sorry about that. I got distracted. Uh, I had to sort out the spam that was going on with that. Uh, we are now going to have uh, FD win moving up, however, to that checkpoint. So they have to break us now. They have the inkjet and armor to support them, and hopefully they will be able to do it. Machine plane going down and Tyler on the side right now will mean that FD win are in a really, really great situation. Yeah, FD win is sitting really in a great position here as they are continuing to get the picks on Slaughterhouse. It looks like it was just Soldier up there. Sol Soldier was called out here, and I... FD Win has, you know, three people on the, the tower there to push it through that checkpoint as they are now at the last checkpoint as well. And looks like that is going to be game. That is it, Rissa. They do take the series five to three. FD Win do win it out in the end. But I mean, Stone Tower's had such a good performance today. Uh, you, I, I honestly feel like if game seven, the one before this one, wasn't Mako Mart, then we could have easily seen Slaughterhouse seen Slot win it in the game nine. But I mean, that's how it is. The maps favor you sometimes, and they sometimes don't. I mean, that's obvious, but yeah. Uh, FD win will win the series 5-3. Congratulations to them turning around that uh, that situation that was looking very, very scary for them. But Slaughterhouse really, really leaving their mark on Tassel, I feel. Because uh, yeah, they didn't pick up any wins, unfortunately. Uh, you know, especially with the two dropouts, they weren't able to, you know, find the team to bring the upset over. I feel like we definitely could have seen one if uh, they played against every team. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, they, they do, don't pick up any sets in Castle overall, but they really do leave a mark on it. A 5-4 against Starburst that easily could have been turned uh, into their favor and a 5-3 against FD win really shows how this team is turning around recently. I love their Tassel look. And if they can bring this, you know, into the future, into more tournaments, then we could see this team be truly, truly strong. You know, a team that I've said for so long has the players and I don't understand why they're not getting the results, but it looks like the results will finally be coming, you know, into the later tournaments, Russa. Yeah, um, I mean, everything you said is just perfectly spot on there. And especially, you know, since um, a lot of us, you know, we thought it was going to be a 5-0, Slaughterhouse was just absolutely showing us that they have that momentum and they have the synergy and they're still in it in this uh in top splatoon yeah they're definitely in top splatoon and they proved that here today uh you know again though fd win bring it back brilliantly i feel like we really saw them in their stride you know right at the end there um you know they, they, they went on to what felt like you know pure comfort picks to me we had the double nautilus players coming out you know playing double nought regardless of you know how they feel you know about its strength they just bring it out you know they wanted their players on their strong picks and that's probably why they had the map in there so they could bring out that double nought you know if it gets to that sort mm -hmm. of situation and you know we, we saw it do really really well for them and that's going to be uh again slaughterhouse unfortunately not doing no taking the victory but they did so so well today but that's gonna be fd win i believe oh no 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 that's gonna be fd win and starburst i'm pretty sure confirmed as your na uh playoffs right now but the first seed will be decided between them in the match next week Ooh, next week is gonna be a really really big league week for tassel so that's yeah. gonna be really exciting i i love how these reschedules, you know, these, what is it? We have Rift and, sorry, we have a uh, Freeze and Radiance and FD Win and Slaughterhouse. The number one and two and seed from each region were both supposed to be played earlier, but because of reschedules, they both got rescheduled to week six. So your final regular season, uh, regular season of week of Tassel will give you some of the most important and hype matches that we're going to see so far leading up to playoffs. So uh, we're not going to see that happen today or this weekend. But that's going to be uh, next week. We will see those crazy important matches. Uh, but we do have a match tomorrow. I believe that's Radiance Usual Guys tomorrow. So another really big match and a new look from Usual Guys. So if you want to see, you know, new Usual Guys, I don't know if you're watching their scrims, they look crazy. The energy looks so, so much, you know, uh, more comfortable for all of them. And they've been doing really, really well. So I'm really excited to watch that match tomorrow. I believe that's... Is that Toby and Kbot? It's a uh, Hitzel and Kbot. Yes, we have special guest Hitzel coming through uh, with Kbot. So make sure you watch that match tomorrow over at Kbot's channel. Uh, but yeah, again, thanks so much for watching, guys. Uh, but I think that's going to be all of Tassel for today. If you want to say what I don't know anything in the world, um, I don't, I don't have anything much to say, much to add. Uh, just happy to be here. <laughs> As am I, Rissa. It's been. Uh, great commentating with you today and but that's going to be it make sure you tune into tassel tomorrow over at kbot's channel follow the twitter for more information that's gonna be tassel underscore spl you can also check out the youtube which you can find you know through the twitter the twitter is really like the main hub you want to follow for all of kbot's bad memes uh match results match times youtube vods you want to make sure you're following that twitter if you want all of tassel information but yep that's gonna be it for today guys so thanks very much uh thanks very much for watching tassel but uh that's gonna be all i think we're good to go all right 
Okay, uh, and while we wait for this raid now button to come up, thanks again for watching. Congrats on FT1 for the win, and make sure to keep up to date with Tassel. We'll see you guys next time.